Hi everyone, I'd like to make a video about the questions that came up uh, when I made the Leon knife and also the cleaver for Mr. Barnhart, the second one. So with the Leon knife, I wanted to make that knife about a year ago. A client contacted me and asked me to make it a little bit bigger so I spent about a good eight hours going back and forth with him, uh, redesigning the knife, making the blade longer, the handle bigger, um, we talked about what steel he wanted to go with, uh, the type of material to use for the handle, and uh, so we, you know, we discussed the price with the the steel, and he decided to go with the stainless steel. So I said, hey, let's go with the CPM 154, and he agreed with it. Uh, he agreed on the thickness of the steel, so I ordered it. The steel came in. And then he goes, oh, let, let's use LMAX steel. I said, brother, come on. You all, we already went over that, you know. And he said, all right, all right. So uh, let, let me look over the, the sketch that I sent him. And I'll, I'll get back to you. And it's been over a year, a year since uh, he's trying to get back to me. But anyway, so finally, um, another person contacted me. He said, I want I want the Leon knife. I want it badly. I said, all right. So when I started making it, I said, hey, buddy, just want to let you know I started making your knife. Oh, he was like, oh, so happy. He's like, I, I can't wait till you finish it. All right. So once I finished it, I contacted him. I said, your knife is done. Send me your, your uh, information so I could send you an invoice. And he goes, oh, I, I can't buy it right now. I can't afford it right now. I said, all right. So I sold it to one of my previous customers that bought it from me, so bought different knives from me, and I offered it to him and he took it. So that's the story behind the Leon knife. There was a comment saying that the Leon knife does not even look like the one in the video game. Well, it does. I tried to uh, take the same shape but I use different handles and handle material. So I tried to put a little artistic uh, touch to it or the telly touch. And uh, that, that's why I'm, to you it might look different, but the shape of it is the same. There was a question about what is this? Uh, so in, in a video I show you that after the quench, the, the blade of this or the steel bent a little bit or warped. Uh, so I, this is basically a G10 block and I cut it and then when you put in a vise you can uh, squeeze the steel and bend it to the shape that you want but you want to do that when so after you quench it you know you take it out while it's still hot that's when you gotta do the, the shape or the bending or the straightening of the blade if you let it cool down, then it's going to break. It's going to shatter. So try to do it right after the quench while the steel is very, very hot. I'd like to give you a little tip. How many of you, when gluing uh, spacers and then a handle material, when you start clamping it, this part starts to move out? So what I started doing, I would, uh, when prepping everything, I would drill on the corners with a 1 8 drill bit and then so when when I put the glue I put this piece on I would put the drill bit in drill bit this way it secures it doesn't move around all I have to worry about when I clamp it is so the the handle material doesn't move around and once you know once I'm done everything is clamped I pull the the drill bits out and it's a done deal hopefully that helps you guys question was what is the sequence that I use to hand sand the handles once I once everything is glued up I will take it to the belt grinder I'll grind up all the excess material off but then I'll, I'll go 320 or 400 grit uh, with the sandpaper and then I'll work up to 600 uh, 800 uh, then I'll take the, the uh, what do you call it? the Corby bolts, the decorative pins, I'll take them up to 2000 grit. This way when you buff them, 
uh, they become like mirror mirror finish so that so basically uh, 320 400 600 800 uh, 1200 and then I'll take it to 2000 or 2500 something like that why do you post all part videos all at once so for instance if it's a three-part video I'll post all three of them all at once well I guess the the person that's asking that question they want me to post one part one the first week and then wait a week and post the second part the second week and the third week post another video I did that one time and I got bombarded with questions well how come there's no second part to this video where is the part two and I just got tired of replying to those questions and I from now on I po post all all the parts all at once so it's a done deal I don't have to worry about answering those questions and now let's move on to the questions from the cleaver that I restored for Mr. Barnhart. So, so far it's been going pretty good. No haters on it. But who knows, maybe they'll come up again. Uh, the question was, Does is Mr. Barnhart a cleaver dealer or something like that? No, he's just my co-worker. He had two cleavers. And uh, the first one that I restored for him, I left it with the rough finish. And the second one, it was a more clean finish. Uh, and the other question was, does Mr. Barnhart have any other knives that you made? Yes, he does. He has the M9 bayonet and an Anglian knife. So right now he has four knives that I worked on. Some viewers like the first cleaver that I restored and some love the second one. So I guess everybody has different opinions. Uh, I use different approaches for each cleaver while restoring them. So the first one has, a, like I said, very rough finish. Uh, I left all the dents and texture in it but the second one is I sanded everything down and gave it a brand new fresh look everybody liked the, the handle finish on the second one and so did I I've never worked with Koa before and I got it from Drew uh, his Instagram is uh, Bexerco Burls and excellent product I love it uh, that wood was amazing and the, when, when finished, it was like a 3D uh, or three-dimensional piece of wood. And it, it, it was gorgeous. I absolutely loved it. I loved the finish with the, cor uh, the, the 516s and a 3.8 centerpiece, the decorative pins. It, it, it was a perfect match. I loved it. I didn't show it in the video, but when I was gluing... The first time the handles to the G10 spacers, when I was pushing on a hardener part of the glue, a lot of air came out instead of glue, and you could see that in the video. And when I started mixing everything, I left a little um, that little cup that I mix in. I left it on the side just to you know. I, that's the way I check if everything glues up pretty good. And the next day. Well, that same day, I was wondering, why, why isn't the glue going off? So I gave it 24 hours, and it felt like rubbery. It wasn't really hard, like it's like rock hard, like it's supposed to be. So I gave it another 48 hours, and same consistency. So I had to rip the G10 scales off of the uh, Koa handles, resand it, and cut up new pieces of the spacers, and glue everything up again and this time it was nice and hard so that's a mistake that you didn't see but I'm willing to share with you guys that follow my videos the question and answer videos I guess some of you didn't notice that I, I still put the logo on the cleaver but in a video I did not show it and the reason I didn't do it is because on the first cleaver that I restored it it made a lot of people um, let's use very kind words upset made a lot of people upset that I put my logo on the cleaver that I did not on the steel part that I did not make but on the second cleaver as in the first one and a second cleaver Mr. Barnhart wanted my logo and on the second cleaver his exact words was were um, I want the biggest logo you got so I still placed it you could see it in the pictures I put my thumb over the when I recorded the video I put my thumb over the logo so the weak-hearted people would not get upset but the logo is there 
there was a comment now you can up your skills and start forging your own steel um, there's a great video that just came out and it's by uh, Caleb White Knives and he made a great video explaining the title of the video is um, forging is waste of time so if you don't agree with it go watch it so he said forging is waste of time and I agree with him there are a few instances where you need forging like uh, making integral knives so you need to, to move the steel to certain areas to make the steel thicker in those areas uh, Damascus steel when you're making Damascus steel you need to forge um, or let's say you wanna forge something out of let's say uh, 52100 ball bearing you wanna forge a knife out of it yeah I could see that you know for fun of it but other than that there's no point and I'm gonna let you watch that video and I'll post that at the end of, end of my video <clears throat> and go go check it out and you you'll see why forging is kinda pointless of course take it with a grain of salt because this is coming from a guy that never forged I've never forged so but I agree with the idea behind it behind that video so go check it out it's pretty interesting if you wanna get into forging I would suggest that you first make a knife from the uh, by using a stock removal method and the reason why I say that is because you need to know uh, what the knife is supposed to look like where the or the shape of it uh, if you start forging you and you've never made a knife before you don't know where to push the steel while it's hot you know moving the steel around so I suggest make a knife by using a stock removal method or a few knives this way you know what a knife is supposed to be like what it's supposed to feel like and then get into forging I guess some of you don't like that I use the Lansky sharpener and to that I can say is I use what I have and uh, one of the viewers was happy that I was using the razor sharp system and instead of the Lansky I use what I have and when I have more room like I said I, I'm running out of room where to store all the tools so when I have more room I'll uh, I'll buy more fancier sharpeners why put all that work into a five dollar cleaver well, people, like I said, uh, Mr. Barnhart said, people have a mentality that when something breaks, they go throw it out and buy something new. But some people want to have the old items restored. And if they have uh, opportunity presents and they have that opportunity to do so, they do it. Um, for instance, the, the knife that I made for my niece's husband, the legionnaire knife from the expandables he wanted a knife and he said I could go buy a knife but it wouldn't have that sentimental value whereas if you made it for me it, I would have a story behind it same thing with a cleaver you could go buy a cleaver but it doesn't mean anything that cleaver would not mean anything to you whereas if it was restored or made by somebody that you know it would have more value so I guess people restore things or have somebody make for them it's more of a like I said sentimental value on a side note if you guys leave comments on my youtube channel or instagram and they are written in a language that I don't understand I stopped replying to those comments I used to when I had more time I used to sit down and Google translate all of your comments and questions and now I'm I stopped doing it so if it's not written in English or Russian the two languages that I understand I'm not gonna reply to you so take your time do your own Google translate into English so I could read it and reply back to you really quick and I would like to end this video on a sad note uh, a couple of days ago we lost a knife maker, a YouTuber. His channel name is LB Custom Knives. Uh, it was a great channel. I, I followed that channel. I, I was subscribed to that channel. Uh, he made uh, 
fixed blades, he made folders. So it's kind of sad that people go early from this life, but I guess it's life. So enjoy your days that you live here on Earth. Be happy. Um, make something sharp. Make people happy. That's it for me, guys. Um, oh. I guess you've seen it. I made this knife. I made a little short video how I put the handles on. So this is a this is a generation three, I guess, of the Anglian knife. So the generation first was the one that I made about two years ago. Then uh, Mr. Barnhart had his that looked like this, and. This is slightly modified. So that that's what I've been doing so far. And uh, the the customer that bought the Leon knife, he sent me a cleaver to be restored. So you will be seeing that next in a video. Uh, I guess that's it, guys. Take care, stay healthy, and I'll see you with a different video. Bye bye.